I decided to do another seascape. The seascape in the background that you see was one that I did about a year ago that was done with acrylic paints in a more realist type style. And it's of the um, Oregon coast. My daughter and I were up there about five years ago at a beach called Indian Beach. I love that beach. It's just north of Cannon Beach. And a big storm was coming in and my daughter was standing there facing the storm. And I just loved that image of her, so I turned it into a painting. I don't have a videotape of that. That was before I was videotaping, but um, it's always been one of my favorite paintings. And I live in the Arizona desert now, but I, I, um, and I do love the desert, but I do miss the beach. And so I, I like to do a lot of seascapes. And I'm going to do this painting again with my new favorite texture medium called Sure Stick Permanent Patch 101. It is a flexible patching and caulking compound, so it's kind of a mix between uh, wall patch plaster and caulk, so it is flexible. I found that it's worked really nicely on canvas. I buy it at Home Depot. It's like the molding paste that you would buy at art supply stores, but it's a very good price. Well, that's my cat. He, My cat's been keeping me company in here while I paint, and he wants out now, so I'll go let him out, and then I'll be back. Okay, my cat's happy now. Um, so I'm going to start with the sky, which if you've watched my other videos, I often start with the sky. It sort of sets the mood for my painting, and what I've decided to do today is I would like to have some cliffs running along this edge, some very highly textured cliffs, and then I will have the sea in the background here. And um, I'm doing this sort of as a small study, and then I'm, I'm considering doing a, a quite a large painting of it. But I, I want to study the composition and see how the texture works with the cliffs before I go further. I sketched in my cliffs um, about where I want them. Now that I have them in there, I realize I'm, I'm going to make this a little bit larger of an area because the cliffs are really going to be a, a big part of the painting. And then I'll have a little bit of land of some sort down here that you're kind of looking down at maybe a, a grassy top. And um, I also just wanted to show you, I used to sew. I sewed for many years. In fact, I have a website, craftandfabriclinks.com. It still has uh, free patterns and things on it, free quilt patterns and free sewing book and things. So I still have my sewing rulers and I love them for painting because the about the only place where you have to have an absolutely straight line is the horizon line when you have water involved, that it can't be sloped this way or that way or something like that. And I, I cannot draw that freehand and be totally straight. Um, another place, of course, would be buildings. I know an artist who never uses a ruler. Um, I, I can't imagine. I, I have, absolutely have to have my ruler. But the reason a large sewing ruler works so well is it not only has a straight edge here, but it has these marks on the sides. So it's very, very easy to, to use to make sure that everything is totally square. So for now, I'm going to put in my sky probably with a mixture of palette knife and brush and finger paints. I have ordered some gloves that are surgical gloves that will fit me. I have gloves right now, but they, they're too large and I'm too impatient to wait. So I'm using acrylic paint and so I think I'm okay just using my fingers. But for safety purposes, if you do finger painting, you should actually wear gloves. For my sky, being that this is acrylic, if you haven't watched other videos, acrylic paints are all water-based. So I just dip my brush in the water, dab it off on the paper towel so I don't have too much water, and then I pick up a little bit of a couple of different colors. I don't mix them exact, I just pick them up and I just start laying down my color. And this is just the base background. Acrylic paints uh, are usually layered. I can sometimes have many, many layers in a painting. 
the more layers you put down, the more realistic it will look. So when you first put a layer down, don't worry about it looking perfect. There will end up being many more layers on it normally. I just did a finger painting of a very stormy sky with a storm rolling in. And that was done also with the permanent patch, and that one is available as in the video. But I think this one will be a little bit sunnier. So I'll lay down a bit of um, a bit lighter color now. The sky gets lighter as it approaches the horizon. Normally, unless you have storm clouds along the horizon or something. It can almost fade out right at the horizon, so I need to lighten that up a lot. And I often come back when I'm all finished and touch up areas of the sky too, so this isn't totally dry yet, so I'll probably come down and lay down a few more layers. So now I believe I'll use my palette knife. To get some paint across there. Gives a feeling of some clouds drifting along. So if I wanted this to be a super realism painting, I would I would add a lot of detail and brushwork to that. But I kind of like the look of palette knife, especially since I'm going to have a lot of texture going on down here. This is all permanent patch, so I'll put the permanent patch on my plate, and I will start mixing colors into it. I think I'll start with a little bit of dark brown there. Kind of mix that up. That way I can just start kind of laying that down. Now black goes a long way so you don't need very much. Another nice color that's just slightly um, not, not as harsh as black but also very very dark is Payne's Gray. So I use a lot of Payne's Gray. This is Payne's Gray here. It's It just looks almost black, like I said, but um, I'll mix a bit of, uh, mix a bit of Payne's Gray in there. Now this permanent patch is meant to be painted, so I don't want to just put down permanent patch with no paint. And I've, I've been experimenting with mixing paints with permanent patch or putting down the permanent patch first and then painting on top of it. And both of them work. Colors become distinct as they come forward to the eye. They kind of fade into the background the further away they are. So I have to be careful not to just pick up the, the patch here without any paint. I need to keep it mixed over here. And I can get, and this is white paint here, so I and I can use that as well. And up here, where I want it to be very dark, kind of close, closer to the eye here. This is far away cliff, and then we're coming closer and closer here. I don't want it to be totally black, though, so 
I will pick up some of my permanent patch and mix that with the black. But I'll also just toss in a little bit of red. See how that looks. Maybe even a little bit of gold. Because I, I just don't want that to be totally black. That would be as if maybe it's in such shadow that you're not really even seeing it. And as I've stated in other uh, videos of my paintings, the brain interprets quite a bit. The eye sees this as coming down farther. So this is the perspective here. This is getting, this is far away, this is close. So I have to be careful what I do along here as well. This probably should end down here. But that's all right, I'll take care of that when I come back and I do my land up this way. So now, the rest of this, this will be right across here, the top of the land. And this is all going to be turning ocean down here. So now I need to bring in my ocean colors. And I can have some darkness back in here for my ocean. Different colors kind of nice to um, lay down a little bit of something just to get it started. I'm not real concerned at this point what I'm putting down. I'm just putting my some kind of a base down. Paint gray makes for nice, deep looking areas out in the water. Can also make a stormy effect for me. Blue greens will give you a kind of a Caribbean effect, but if you use dark greens, you'll get more of a um, an area that looks quite deep. So for me, it's it's fun to play around with the the colors, because there's a lot you can do with ocean colors. Oh, my cat's still not happy. <laughs> we can't let our animals out here in the desert because we are surrounded by a lot of coyotes. I'm out in North Phoenix and this is coyote country. Quite. So now I have I have a good good amount down there, so I can use my fingers at this point. Kind of mix up until I get a color that I like. Just start running that across.
And as I lay it down, if it's if it's a little bit too dark or too light, I just move my fingers accordingly to kind of cover up areas. So I at this point you don't you don't want to be afraid. Like if I lay that down and I, and I don't like that color, that's fine. I just go back over it with a little Payne's gray and a few other things and just move your fingers around and it just kind of vanishes into it then and your 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 brain just pictures that there's a lot of rocks here and there's shallow areas and there's deep areas and it's a very interesting technique. I really enjoy mixing the texture and the finger painting and the palette and the brushwork. I think this will be brushwork up here to touch it off. And I I can never get this line just the way that I want unless I use a small brush. So that'll be brushwork. hard on my brushes. That's what got me going in finger painting. I, I couldn't get a brush one day to do just what I wanted and I thought heck with it and I put my hand up there and made it do what I wanted and I found wow I really kind of like that. So now I look for any little areas that I've missed because you don't want any canvas showing. That's why I start out with putting the palette over the whole thing. You can also do that with a brush, but the palette helps me just lay down different types of areas. I like the effect. But you just want to make sure that you have every bit of your, your canvas covered. Now for the horizon up here, this is my patch, I need to stay away from there, so I'm picking up some, so that's too wet, I need to fix my horizon line here. So I will pick up a little bit of Payne's Gray, a little bit of Prussian Blue, and a bit of white, play around with that color. And the horizon can kind of blend in with the sky. Don't want there to be white canvas showing through there. It's not quite interesting enough. I want to throw in a little, I like, it needs a little variation to the color even way out there. And then I can blend in a little bit lighter in other areas. This is where I come back though and make sure that I have enough variation in my painting. I don't want it too much the same anywhere because water is not the same anywhere. So there's just enough interest in the water and yet you don't go to any one place. I always look for, is there any place where my eye is trying to go right to that spot? Um, and just stay there, be something that's out of place. If I had a little red spot over here, for example, now if there was reddish to the, if there was a reddish tint to the water here, but I also had some red flowers someplace else, or red in the rocks, and the red kind of blended with the water, then your eye would keep moving around, and that would be fine. But for composition, you just, you don't want the eye to go to some place and stay there. I have some gold up in here and I also have some gold then down here. And there's even a little bit of gold hint out in the water here and there. So it keeps, the eye keeps kind of roaming around. So 
So now I need to decide what I want to do with that color. And I think that I kind of like the idea just to add a little bit of brightness. I wanted to tie in with the other golds, but be a little bit more interesting. So I think I will throw in a little bit of this color. This is a nice paint, Liquitex Heavy Body Cadmium Yellow. I'll use a brush. Cadmium, if it says cadmium hue, from what I understand, it doesn't have actual cadmium in it. It's just the hue of cadmium. It's like saying chocolate flavoring. That may not be chocolate. It just means it tastes like it. But when it says cadmium yellow, that means it actually has cadmium in it, which is a metal. There's a very low toxicity to um, acrylic paint, which is why I use it rather than oil. But still, it's probably not the best thing to finger paint with it. I don't know the real answer to that, but to be safe, it's probably much better to use a brush or gloves if you're using cadmium paints. So I'll just lay down my base coat first, like I tend to do normally. And this is where I brought that up a little bit too high, which, which could happen, but it's a little bit... It, it bothers my eye a bit, so I'm going to cover that up. This actually would be coming down. White is a very nice blending paint, and it's also very, very nice for erasing. Anybody I'm ever working with as a student, I tell them to think of white as a great eraser. So again, now I'm just kind of playing around with color. I'm throwing in a little bit of uh, Prince Sienna. Now this is further away, so I don't want this to be real distinct back here. This top part. This is the edge of the cliff up here and where it runs into the ground above it. Like if you were to walk out here, you'd be standing right up here. If this was an Oregon Coast painting, I would have probably trees and things up here. The Oregon Coast doesn't have quite the same steepness to the cliffs. It's They come down like this and there's a lot more beach down here. I was going to come back and add some spray here. I don't think I'll think about that. I want to keep it very there probably be a little bit, just a hint, to show you that the that the water is hitting at the base. But there's really not much beach, and I don't need a whole lot going on there. I think it would it, it, I could overdo it a bit if I added too much spray and things down here. Add a little hint of yellow. Could be almost like little flowers growing back out. Your brain will tell you when something is, when your painting is finished. And although this is closer and I would normally have a lot more detail here because it is closer, it's just not a big part of the painting. It's, it's more to kind of set off other areas. But I think what's bothering me is it just doesn't have quite enough going on here. It's too plain needs to have a little something interesting. That might be just enough. Now I had thought that I would come back and add a lot of palette work and waves and things, but I don't think I will. Like I was saying, I think this has enough variation in it that it's interesting. The eye goes to the textured cliffs. So I'm going to add just the tiniest little bit of spray down here. I have to be careful not to get too much. And this is my favorite little frazzly brush that I feature in a lot of my videos. And I don't want it to be bright white, so I'm going to pick up a little bit of Payne's Gray with it. Payne's Gray and white. So I've got a little 
hint of something that's a little not quite enough though. It's almost about as much as it needs. It doesn't really need too much there. So you can't have, when you're painting, you can't necessarily have a super strong preconceived idea of what you're going to do because then you get there. And I had pictured a lot more foamy stuff going on along here, but I don't think I want that. I think that I think it's telling me it's finished right now. So I'll leave it for now. And um, I like that. So now I'll consider doing this on a much, much larger painting. I have a 36 by 36 that I've been thinking about. I think this will work really well. Thank you for watching.